McNasty Man here today with you. Uh, we're Today's show is a lot of fun. We're taking your questions and we're diving through uh, player questions, some strategy questions, uh, draft day trading questions, all sorts of, of goodies, and we get a, a listener on blast today. So check it out. Make sure you like and subscribe and enjoy the show. Oh, Foot Clan, it's that time of year. Fantasy it's football that time of year. is back. This is where you and your friends, you're all chatting about fantasy football, and we want you to be the smarter of you and your friend. Smartest. So, smartest. So get the ultimate draft kit. Now's the time to start doing all your research, doing your prep. Uh, you can put in mock drafts into our new draft analyzer, which, Mike, I don't know if you knew this. Tell me. It is now live in the app as well. So I can, did know that. Oh, man, it's so good. So you can check it out. Go to ultimatedraftkit.com and uh, win, your, win your league this year. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podcast. That's the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. If you're nasty, Jason, are you, st are you staying nasty? Oh, man. <laughs> are you kidding me? I mean, when it's just the two of us, it's the hitman and, and Mick and, Nasty over oh, here. Oh, Mick Nasty. Yeah, I just upgraded. Has anyone ever asked you before just now, are you staying nasty? Uh, I mean, if I had a dollar <laughs> for every time... You staying nasty? Yeah, I'm going to stay nasty today. Hey, stay nasty, man. Yeah, stay. you too. Stay nasty. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. It is Saturday, July the 31st. That means August is coming. That means Monday there's a show. And Tuesday there's a show. We are five times a week from here on out all the way through the end of 2021. So uh, strap in and have a fun ride. It is go time. If you want to follow the show, uh, just hit that follow button on your podcast app right now or wherever you listen to your podcast. If you want to watch, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. Right now it is me, Mike, the fantasy hitman, right? Jason, I don't, let's, let's lock this in. Lock in. Yeah, which ver or do you want to be Jason for today's show? Do you want to be Jason, uh, nasty man, big mm. nasty? I think we're gonna go with Mick Nasty. I think we're gonna go with Mick Nasty Reaper. Oh, that's what, because I'm I'm taking Andy's title for this show. He's not here, and I have been just straight killing all of these every everybody that I like, or I'm drafting high and or drafting every single uh mock draft I'm in. They they're all just uh dropping like flies. Are you referring to the last show we did a head to head mock draft. We did a super flex mock if you want to listen to that, that was a Thursday show. Are you referring to when you declared during that draft, as you were drafting Robbie Anderson, that they need to essentially put him in bubble wrap mm -hmm. and then you draft him, and magically, Robbie Anderson is sick. And he's sick. And then uh, I also declare that I'm getting Cortland Sutton in every draft, and it's like, hey, he's, he's not 100% yet. It's yes. like, what is happening? The cardboard bear extraordinaire, Jay Grizz, <gasps> is here as Andy Holloway finishes up his vacation. He will be back on Monday. The quick question of the day is from Chadwick James 20. Do you like draft pick trading? If so, what are some examples or strategies? Um, no, I love draft. Oh, victory. you got oh, me. I got you. You good. got me. Look, um, I, I would say this. It's, it's different between a redraft, a keeper and a dynasty league. If you are in a dynasty or a keeper league, you must have draft pick trading. It is a quintessential part of the league. It is so much fun. It adds to it. If you're just doing a redraft, I'm fine with it. I'm cool with it. You want to add that, but I don't think you have to. I think a redraft league can you know, get by without it. Um, our main league is a keeper league. Love draft pick trading. And my biggest tip that I would give someone for like, how do you take advantage of draft pick trading is be the first person to mock draft your, your specific league, because especially in a keeper league where uh, a lot of the player pool is gone and a lot of the player pool is there. Not everybody knows what the seventh pick in the draft is worth. 
you think, oh, that's a good pick. But have you actually slotted the players in? Have you done the, like a little mock draft mm -hmm. with the players that are gone? And you go, oh, man, I, it turns out this year the whole second round is super valuable. I want all those players. I'm going to try to trade for those. Um, and other people are like, yeah, those picks aren't, you, you know, or vice versa. You just, you know the value because when you look at a draft pick trade and you're making that offer, you pull up your mock and you say, I am trading this player for this player plus, and then you look at the mock and you say, one of like these three guys in that range, and I feel like it, it's always allowed me to take advantage of, of those type of trades. Well said. If you want to stay connected and follow the show, please do so. Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers is the show account. All three of us are on IG holding it down. I am at FF Hitman. Find Jason at Jason FFL. Find Andy at Andy Holloway. Those are also our Twitter handles if you want to follow us over there for breaking news, reactions. We very frequently, when there is an island, when there is a primetime game on, oh, it's, yeah. it, that's a good time, man. It, it, the, the best part of like of Sunday Night Football is that everyone is in it together. We're all watching the exact same thing, football fans. We're all watching the exact same thing at the exact same time Live. And, just, and reacting with each other. So that's always a really fun uh, part of the NFL season. So if you want to do that, follow us on the Twitters. As Jason eloquently said at the beginning of the show, the Ultimate Draft Kit is available, ultimatedraftkit.com. This is our baby, our draft tool, the number one resource for dominating your fantasy draft. And the Draft Analyzer which is a part of the UDK Plus, which uh, happened to – it was only on the web for a while, but we locked the engineers in a room, mm -hmm. and we, we – Fed uh, them twice a day. Fed, well, uh, yeah, I mean, you got to keep your energy up. We don't want them to die before they no, finish the product. No, of course not. We, we kept them hydrated, but they got it in the app now, and it, it looks great. It works fantastic. So that is now available. Uh, UltimateDraftKit.com is how you get the product. Let's move into the news. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. It's being reported. Ian Rappaport said that the Packers have agreed to the reworked contract for Aaron Rodgers. We knew it was coming for him, but essentially the 2023 part of his contract is voided. He has this year, and he is technically under contract next year, but the cap hit is massive. The contract is set up in a way for the Packers to get rid of Aaron Rodgers next year, trade him, and then whoever is trading for him is heavily incentivized to extend Aaron Rodgers immediately. Yeah, that's, so that seems how it will play out. Exactly. That's what's going to happen. He will be traded next season, leaving only half of that as dead cap for the Packers and the new team to, to restructure. Dak Prescott underwent an MRI. He left Wednesday's practice with arm soreness. Diagnosed with a strained muscle in his throwing shoulder. Get better soon, Dak. And the, uh, this morning, because we are recording on Thursday, this was what was breaking today. Quarterback Carson Wentz from the Indianapolis Colts. He will be out indefinitely as they further test on his foot. He is... felt a twinge. This is... It, yeah, it's, it's yucky, but if I could... That we so we don't know what the injury is. They don't know yet. Um, and it was a twinge. It was a, it was a, it was a twinge. It was a just, tweak. It was just a, a twinge. But for just to re, a twinge. But to report that someone is out indefinitely, like that was the verbiage. That, that, that was word the first. Is... That was the first thing. But like every single injury, if you're if you're quick enough, you could say they're out indefinitely until we know what the injury is. Like it's so. That's like I feel like that's irresponsible reporting. I agree. And here you want a funny story from my youth. Uh, I was playing in a fantasy basketball league, and one of my uh, starters, like, I was probably a foot injury. I don't remember, but they went down, and the reports were, they are out indefinitely. And I, as a younger person, I didn't really know what that meant. Right. And it's like, oh, so they're done? They're just done? They're out in indefinitely? So I dropped him. Uh-huh. And a couple weeks later, he comes back from the injury and he's dominant. But he's no longer on my team hmm. because reporters are out there throwing this scary word around. 
Well, it gets a lot of play. I mean, the, the Twitter sphere, when you say someone's out indefinitely, it explodes and, and I'm sure they gain followers. The reality is we need to know whether this is a stress fracture or just a, a you know, a sprained foot. Right. Um, it could be a very short term thing, a couple of weeks. Um, it could if it's a stress fracture and he's had stress fractures in his back already. If that's what it is, then it's more serious. The only way to recover is rest. And then I would say Jimmy Garoppolo. <laughs> go, That's not a bad idea. Someone go trade for Jimmy G so that my prediction comes right. That's yeah, all I care about. not bad. I've also heard Andy Dalton float around. But we're still a long ways away from that. Congratulations, New York. Zach Wilson did sign his rookie contract. They, they got together and they figured it out. So let's see what the young man can do. His first, his first day of practice yeah, went we, well, right? We, we've heard the, the first day of practice didn't go very well. But I mean, it, whatever. It's just yeah. it's just funny the timing of it. A Dolphins wide receiver section on the news. Oh boy! Oh man! Devontae Parker onto the pup list Wednesday. Don't worry, they have a lot of depth at the position. Well, yeah, they've got Will Fuller. They just brought him in. Uh, Will Fuller is now dealing with an undisclosed injury. He left practice. Well, at least they drafted. You know their their first round pick, Jalen Waddle. He has been healthy enough to practice, but he may not be back to 100%. He had that right ankle injury. It was uh it was a while ago, but you know, that was like Jalen Waddle, if you remember, back, played in Alabama, missed almost the entire season, tried to come back for the championship game, really couldn't and uh so come on, come on Dolphins. Yeah, that's uh, you let's know, let's get let's get some health I was Some just or on a, I don't know. a Dolphins podcast recently talking about Tua and how his weapons, you know, this is this is his chance. Everything is set up for him, and now all of the, you know, I, I have been seeing several long bomb touchdowns to Albert Wilson coming out of training camp, and now we see why, because he's, he's their healthy wide receiver. It would bring me joy if Albert Wilson finally became a thing. Albert Wilson's a good player. Albert Wilson cannot stand or cannot stay on the field, and right now he's the Miami Dolphins option that is there. Marquise Brown left with a uh, after tweaking his leg. It does not appear to be injury. Now this one I think is worth a little bit of a further discussion. Cortland Sutton, Broncos wide receiver, perceived Broncos number one wide receiver. The head coach, head coach Vic Fangio, said he is still holding back on his return from the torn ACL. If you watch the video of Cortland Sutton running the routes, it does look like there's a little hitch in the giddy up. There's something going on. Jason, you have been the most bullish on Cortland Sutton. We're still early in the process, but this is is this giving you any heebie-jeebies? Uh, I think it gives me slight heebie-jeebies. Just a it, heebie? It, it gives a me a heebie, heebie or a jeebie. I'm not to the jeebies yet. Okay. Uh, but the heebie is... Because you can't get to the jeebies unless you have the heebies. Right. You've got to start with the heebies. you got to start at the beginning. Sure. Um, the, the reality... I, I wonder how much of my fear is just the fact that everyone I love has been dropping like flies. It's <laughs> like, oh, no, not again. But I, I don't want to read too much into this because... He is. Uh, we all we all know he's coming off of the ACL injury, mm -hmm. um, and we know the timeline for that. And that as you get back, you get further and further into full strength. He will he will fully recover from an ACL. This was a standard ACL. This was nothing uh, crazy. And we see players come back from that all the time. They need enough time. Um, he's out there. He didn't start on the pup. He's training. He's so if the head coach is like, I think he's holding back a little. I I think that's fine at this point um and we'll see you know this isn't a player who isn't going to play in preseason um because he's not recovered enough so I think we'll have a lot of information by the time um you know NFL or fantasy drafts are happening and I I'm still I'm still fine with Cortland Sutton right now but it's something to monitor hype train oh, what what happened over there well, I'm, did you forget you were holding the mute button? I did forget I was holding the mute button. I'm going back and forth. I'm obviously a little under the weather right now. Yeah, you can hear it in my voice. So I'm muting when I'm sniffing and coughing. And you and, just you got lost. And I got lost in the mute. Henry Ruggs, wide receiver for the Las Vegas Raider, last year's uh, very high first-round pick. 
Says he has gained 13 pounds in the offseason to try and be a more physical player. Now, on my incredibly uh, very scientific, very data-driven positional player weight chart. Right, which you've always been all about. I, I, I looked into it. I plotted him in. I gave him the 13 more pounds. My chart likes it. My chart likes it, Jason. You, Henry Ruggs has been one of your favorite sleepers. Uh, going incredibly late in drafts. <laughs> Quiet. Don't <laughs> let people know or he'll Oh, he'll oh fall. we need to protect him? Yes. Well he's he's bulked up to protect himself from your curse. Yeah. Uh but what you were gonna say is this is usually good. When wide receivers gain weight, yep. um, you view that as a more positive. When running backs gain weight, you view it as a negative and vice versa. That is true. That is how I view it. So we will see for Henry Ruggs. That was today's news and notes presented by Sleeper. Sleeper is currently the largest dynasty platform for fantasy football, number one by far. If you want to stay connected with your friends all year, dynasty is the way to do it, and sleeper is the place. Jason, we're heading into the mailbag. I want to try something. Okay. I know you're a little under the weather, so I oh, need. No. I just need your best effort here. All right. We're gonna harmonize. Oh. You're gonna you're gonna give me the melody. Okay. And I'm gonna try and go up. And we're gonna see what happens. <clears throat> okay. We haven't practiced this. This is live. I'm putting now. It on when the... you say melody, you just mean the norm. Yes. Okay. All right. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Mailbag. Mailbag. Woo. I'm not sure how that went. <laughs> Brooks, how was it? Ten out of ten. Thank you. All okay. right. I mean, man. I was I was a part of it. I felt good being inside, but you never know how it's gonna look on the outside. I, 10 out of 10, you like that? Based oh, yeah. on the look on Jay Grizz's face, I think we rocked it. <laughs> Thank you, Jay Grizz. Welcome to the mailbag. First question. Michael in Sterling, Scotland. Oh, bonjour. Bonjour, which we have a note here that says the main battle in Braveheart was there? Oh, yeah. Mr. Braveheart, is that true? That is correct. All right. I mean, it depends. I mean, whatever you determined the main battle to be, I don't think there was a main battle. But, sure, Sterling has a big one. That, that note is from Michael, so we'll take his word for it. Oh, yeah. well, well, well. Okay. Got Kyle Pitts in my Dynasty rookie draft, but I already have George Kittle. Should I trade Kittle now for a King's Ransom? If so, what do you think the, that fair value is? I actually think you're going to get more value from Kittle at the end of the year than you would now. Um, Kittle was injured last year, and he is not being seen – you know, last year, last year going in, there was all this debate. Kelsey or Kittle? Sure. Kittle or Kelsey? Kittle or, or Kittle. Um, yeah. and, and now he got injured. He disappointed. I don't think Kittle's value is at its peak right now, and he's still very young. No, we're all drafting Darren Waller over him. Exactly. So I would, and and you know, you know my, well, maybe you don't, maybe new people are coming in. I stand alone in the sense that I don't think Kyle Pitts is going to have the far and away best rookie season of all time to the tune where he's a top three type of guy this year. So I think you're going to want Kittle this year. You're going to want Kyle Pitts to dominate after this year, and you're going to get the most value trading Kittle, uh, assuming he's healthy after a dominant performance this season. So I would hold on to both. Look to trade Kittle in 2021. All right, let's talk or about... This is 2021. Yeah. In 2022. There you go. Let's talk about Chris Godwin off of Instagram. Ted Skaliski? His question is, DJ Moore or Chris Godwin in a PPR, both healthy and... Oh, playing for payday. We got payday narrative in the question. Oh, good, good. Uh, as an aside, man, I love paydays. <laughs> they are so good. Really? Oh, they're. I know. They're so it's, simple. It's a uh, chocolate... No, no chocolate. That's that's a baby oh, Ruth. Oh, it's okay. basically a skinned baby Ruth as a payday. <laughs> oh no! <It's> just, yeah, <laughs> they, they, you just uh, skin it, hang it up to dry, so and then you just, have a payday. It's peanuts and caramel. Yeah, that's basically it, and salt. It's delicious, huh? Um. Anyways, uh, DJ Moore or Chris yes. Godwin, full PPR. I, I I lean on the DJ Moore side. Okay. I think that the Chris Godwin likely to see more receptions at least. Right, better for the PPR. Um, you 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 know that he has done it before. He's already been a top five fantasy finisher on a season. So uh, the argument is there. But I think that the if you just look at the talent of the two players, I would say that the talent is better with DJ Moore than Chris Godwin, even though they're both extremely talented. 
But DJ Moore has the chance to be the clear-cut one for his team. Robbie Anderson, uh, Terrace Marshall are um, there, but I don't, I don't think that I don't think that Chris Godwin could just com completely become the the man, while Mike Evans and Antonio Brown and Gronk and sure. the amount of mouths to feed are there for Chris Godwin. So I would prefer to take the upside shot of DJ Moore personally. As would I. So let's follow this up from Chris Long, thirty two, Mike Evans or Chris Godwin. This is interesting because I like Mike Evans more than Chris Godwin. If they cost the same, I'm taking Mike Evans. We saw a period from week nine on the last eight games of Tampa Bay. This is exactly when they signed Antonio Brown, when Chris Godwin was healthy, when Mike Evans was healthy. The whole team was ready, I don't know, to go on a Super Bowl run. Um, and during that stretch, everyone was valuable. Godwin was good. Antonio Brown was good. Mike Evans was good. So but right Mike now, Evans was the clear one of that group. So Mike I, Evans is the 402 from our sleeper ADP, and Chris Godwin's the 405. So you're, that is not if you're at the beginning of the if you're in the fourth, it's your it's a hitter's choice. Then it's Mike Evans or for what me. Is it, is it fielder's choice? Yeah, I was trying to I was trying to knock it out with a good baseball. Wait, reference. that was a, a baseball reference. Fielder's choice is a reference. Yeah, I feel like you should have to take like a ten second break from this. Well, show. I, I, at least I got it wrong, Jason. <laughs> okay, all right, thank you. Um, yeah, so back to back anti Chris Godwin answers. Wow, but don't take that for an anti Chris Godwin take. Uh, he's phenomenal. He could absolutely be, um, you know, a top fifteen wide receiver this year, but. In both of those situations, I prefer Mike Evans and DJ Moore. Let's hit a voicemail. If you want to leave us a voicemail, you can do that at 302-464-TFFB. Or if you want to submit a question, uh, you just visit the site, and you can do it by text. But let's get to a voicemail. Hey, Ballers, big fan. Uh, question here. Would you keep DK Metcalf for a fifth or DeAndre Swift for a seventh? Thank you. Ooh. I saw this in the dock earlier. Oh, brother. And I'll be honest with you. That's rough. I wanted I was hoping we didn't get to it. <laughs> this is this is as difficult a choice as because like I am Hey Jason. Yeah. Which one of your children is your favorite? Uh are they listening? <laughs> uh, ask me off air. Um it's all of you. It's all of you, children. Um, uh, so Metcalf or Swift. So obviously the the slightly better value is with Swift. Sure. Um, being a seventh rounder versus a fifth rounder. If DeAndre Swift hits, he's far more important to your team than DK Metcalf. Yes. Uh, DK Metcalf far more likely to hit than yeah. DeAndre Swift. So uh -huh. that's why he's going ahead. Um, I, I love both options. The nice thing about this question is I don't think you're going to go wrong. You're not going to be like completely left out to dry. But if this was my team, I would probably take Swift in the seventh because I see a huge break around the sixth round in most of these drafts. And and this is a keeper league, so obviously the rounds might feel a little different. But because you're giving up the the round value for the player, it'll it'll probably play out about the same. Um, and a fifth round pick, I really really love. A seventh round pick, there's some crapshoots. Um. Um, in on, but I don't feel confident. I don't love my seventh rounders, so I'm going to take Swift and keep my fifth round pick. But man, you could you could right now talk I'm taking, me into Metcalf. I'm taking DK Metcalf. Okay, talk me into it. Well, it's it, like you said. It's the if if Swift hits, it's more important. But the probability lies with DK Metcalf. Uh, I have DK Metcalf in my top 10. I believe all of us do. I have him yes. right now at number eight, my wide receiver eight, and I have DeAndre Swift at, at running back 16. And Swift is just, man, he is such a tough evaluation. Uh, you There was even, there was more chatter out of camp seeing, uh, viewing DeAndre Swift and uh, Jamal Williams as a Mark Ingram, Alvin Kamara type of a situation which that works fantastically for both players when you have Drew Brees and, and a top three scoring offense that works out but if you have that level of a split and you have one of the on on paper at least you have one of the worst teams that is in a full rebuild 
that's not great. Yeah, touchdowns to the running back positions on a team level are great historically for the Saints over the last decade. Uh, not, not, not so yeah. much for the Lions. So I totally get that. My thing with Swift, um, and and talk me through this because we've been doing this, you know, for a long, long, long time. Um, I find that Swift meets the criteria that I run into every year, where when I finished my rankings, um, and the just let the stats lie, where I believe all the team statistics and every single player breaks down. DeAndre Swift was very high in my rankings. Like I, he was, sure. he was actually, he, you know, I think he was a top 12 running back. He was right at the back end RB one. And as time has gone on since then, I continue to move him down, uh, uh, you know, disbelieving the, the lions and the, the offensive capability, not thinking this is going to be a team that scores a lot. It could be a timeshare with Jamal Williams, camp chatter, yada, yada. But historically, I find that those players that I really uh, surprisingly liked once I really did the math and, and statted players out and then moved down based on camp news, I, I oftentimes wish I didn't. Okay. And, and I was like, man, I should have stuck to my guns there. And so I'm wondering if we are too low on Swift just as a, as a show because, because of the stink of the Lions. I, I think that is very possible. It's DeAndre Swift is an incredible player and an incredible talent uh, where you you have to often have to go back to that. I mean, he's been in the league for one year. Remember how you felt about DeAndre Swift before the NFL draft, and it was this this is either your number one or your number two running back. No, Swift or Jonathan Taylor. They were right. I mean, uh, you and I were Jonathan Taylor ahead, yes. but we were in the minority. I would say the most of the fantasy community put Swift ahead of Jonathan Taylor. Right. In where it, where it's difficult after the bye week when DeAndre Swift really broke out. I mean, he had he missed a couple games to injury where he was fantastic for fantasy, but he was doing that on while averaging under 16 opportunities a game. It was I mean, because he was I'll, getting five targets every single game. Yeah, and that's what it comes down to will Jared Goff check it down to DeAndre Swift as much as, as much as Matthew Stafford was willing to do. And while I think Matthew Stafford is more inclined to look to the check down than Goff is historically, the difference is the talent around Goff. The, this is why I like TJ Hawkinson. You've got Bashad Perriman right. and Tyrell Williams um, as your main wide receiver. Basically, you don't have a wide receiver core. So you're going to use Swift and Hawkinson in major ways in the passing game. Well, I think we've exhausted <laughs> yeah, DeAndre Swift. Speaking of DeAndre Swift, Jason, we'd like to thank today's sponsor, Pristine Auction, the best sports memorabilia website of all time. Someone went on a Pristine Auction recently, and they snagged a signed DeAndre Swift jersey for just $50. No, th that's that's locked and loaded? That's, yeah, they that's won done. The, the that auction is 50 done. Bucks. Someone got a signed Swift jersey for 50 bucks. Someone got a signed Calvin Ridley jersey for $61. Whew. We got a signed Clyde Edwards Alaire jersey for Oh yeah. I mean, incredible deals going on there. It's a it's a fantastic place to get a really unique gift. Who's on the wall today, Brooks? Oh, awesome Eckler. Austin Eckler himself, the hands of the awesome one have touched that jersey and they signed it. You know what's what's cool is you you read those prices and every time that we actually look up what things go for I'm shocked but they really you can you can get these it's not like yes. it, that's not like the one that went for 60 bucks out of 10,000 like we have bought so many jerseys around here and we get deals like that all the time if you want to sign up check it out pristineauction.com when you do that use our registration code ballers and you're going to get a $10 credit yes. so ballers for $10 for free, and then get some cool gear for sounds very... Like a, sounds like a win. Yeah, it's a, oh, that's a win-win-win, Jason, as they say. All right, Instagram, Malcolm P. Thoughts on Miles Sanders this year? They're not great. Um, so Miles Sanders is someone that disappointed last year, has left people with the burns, and I think because of that, uh, people don't want to draft him. And so narrative-wise, you're kind of down on him. Statistics-wise, I was shocked how low I was on Miles Sanders. Um, 
I think that the idea going into last year was they wanted him to be a true three-down back. It's a real advantage to a team to have a running back that can be on the field all the time. The defense doesn't know if they're passing or running, and that's what they wanted. And they learned last year they cannot do it. And if you look at their transactions, it shows that Yes. They drafted Kenny Gainwell. They grabbed Carrion Johnson off of the waivers. the waivers. They're grabbing other running backs because they learned that Miles Sanders is not set up to be a true three down back. So I think there's going to be a full committee here. And he's still talented. He, yes. He's, he's a good player. He's a good player, but I think that the hope of him being one of those top running backs is as passed. Now he's going as the running back twenty right now at the back of the third round. I don't think that ADP is terrible. Miles Sanders, uh, my thoughts on him have kind of turned into a, a long-running bit on the show, but I'm I'm okay with that. The running back 20, I think that's absolutely fine to take a chance, but I share the concerns of Jason where the Eagles, game script-wise, don't project to be a strong team, which means fewer touches for the running back, and then all the moves that they have made are for pass-catching uh, types of players, especially Kenny Gainwell in the draft. Miles Sanders graded out as one of the worst pass catchers, according to Pro Football Focus, this past year. So it's not strange that that was the production they got on the field, and then they made specific moves. On top of that, you have Jalen Hurts now, who should be the quarterback for the year. A mobile quarterback, a rushing quarterback, leans uh, it like the the studies show. You do see a dip in targets to guys like the running back position because instead of just checking it down like Phillip Rivers who cannot move, Jalen Hurts can either check it down or he can decide to run. So all of those things combined, it really lowers the ceiling for Miles Sanders, what he could do for your fantasy football team. But I don't think that he is – I don't think it's bad. Like I don't, I don't think he is a bad pick at his current ADP. No, I, I would agree with that. I, I've got him right around there as far as my total Now, ranking. having said that, I will never draft him. No, I know you won't. He can, he can go burn. <laughs> Be better, Miles Sanders. Uh, next question is, let's just, we'll take a fun one here. This one is from Nick Tonton, who wants to know what kind of guitar I'm using for the drops. If you're new to the show, uh, I am the music man of the bunch. I, I make all the drops, uh, I record them, and the guitar I use, it's an Ibanez Universe. Uh, back when Korn, Jason, are you familiar with the band uh, Korn? I love Korn. Oh. Korn with a K? Uh, oh, with a K. I am. I, I do remember Korn. I was I never into still Korn. Around. But. Uh, but anyways, back when they burst onto the scene, they, all, they were playing seven-string guitars. And if you were playing guitar, that meant you were into Metallica. That meant in junior high. Yeah, meant you were into heavier bands and corn. Just it was part of your it was part of your path. Is that you have to go through and become a fan of that and want to play a seven string and want to play the the loudest, heaviest metal that you possibly can. So that's can. what you play. So that was I I I begged and I pleaded for all gear for Christmas. Parents, can you get me this? So that it's an Ibanez Universe that I got in. I think it's seventh grade, Ooh, seventh or eighth nice. grade. I still have that. You want to talk about an investment that paid off? Yeah, that guitar right. that I've had for twenty five plus years, and yeah. I I still use I it. I got my son a guitar for Christmas, and it's has not paid off. Oh no! I think he's <laughs> strummed it twice. Uh, I I should have thrown that money in the garbage um, because then I wouldn't have a guitar taking up <laughs> wall space somewhere. Um, so yeah, you do you do the if you don't know you do all the drops. Yes. I do the voices. <laughs> yeah, um, yes, as, yes. As you've... we've established, <laughs> I know it's hard to tell right now because I'm a little <laughs> under the weather and I'm nasally. But you know all the. I and the if it, look, uh, Andy had retweeted it recently, reminding people during the lockdown, I did a, a live stream of me showing my whole process of making a draft. So that's got to be on our YouTube somewhere. You can go check that out if you'd like. This one's from Brendan Jackson off of Twitter. Whew, this is a this is a toughie. AJ Brown in the fifth. That's solid value. Or TJ Hawkinson in the twelfth. It is a ten player league. So the value of a dominant onesie position, a dominant tight end, and a ten keeper, that's worth a lot. And, and TJ Hawkinson in the twelfth, that's free. 
How are you yeah. feeling, Jason? Uh, the 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 gap from the fifth to the twelfth certainly makes it a, a little bit enticing. Um, but like you said, you need to dominate at the onesies, and I think T.J. Hawkinson is solid. I don't think he's dominant. Um, I, I would still rather my team and a ten teamer have Kittle, have Kelsey, have Waller. So I'm going to take the value, which is still great, of A.J. Brown in the fifth. I think he is a more dominant player. And then I might go after, you know, tight end with uh, one of my first couple picks. Yeah, I think that's how I lean going with it as well. And besides, if you dra if you keep T.J. Hawkinson in the 12th, how are you going to draft Adam Troutman in the 12th? That's a, that's a great question, which um, also in a 10-team league is not something you have to do. <laughs> so <laughs> you can just pick him up off of waivers if you'd like. All right. Let's head back to the voicemail. Hey, guys. What's your take on Jacoby Myers? I think he's going to be the best pass catching option on New England this year, taking over for that Julian Edelman role. And oh, you, oh, <laughs> dang it, <laughs> messed it up. Oh man, <laughs> that's great. What's Brooks? You left that in there? <laughs> yeah, I did this time. Oh, get oh I'm sorry, my man. Here's what's crazy: that th that bus was driven exclusively by Brooks. <laughs> Brooks backed the money truck up and said, "I'll do what I want." But here's the thing: this that was like the best. Most eloquent question we've ever received. About Jacoby Myers? Well, certainly about a Jacoby Myers. I, I, the get whole, to, I get to hear those all the time, and no one else gets to, so I just thought yeah. I'd share the I, it share sounded the It sounded like it was almost a bit at the end. Like, he was doing a bit. Like, he got the whole question in. He was eloquent, and then was like, oh, shoot. Hey, congratulations. You made the show. You sure did. So, Jacoby Myers, Jason, the New England Patriots clearly prioritized their offense in free agency. Jonu Smith. Hunter Henry, the tight ends, they were added for big money. Nelson Aguilar was added. Kendrick Bourne. They have tried to retool this offense, but Jacoby Myers was heavily, heavily targeted last year. You, I mean, in games he played, a 22.7% target share. He, The caller was not wrong that we have seen the slot role be very important to the Bill Belichick offense. Now, whether or not that's a Tom Brady thing or a Bill Belichick thing, that I think jury's still out on that. Where are you on Jacoby Myers? So I completely believe that Jacoby Myers is one of the top two options there. I, I see, you know, I think they're going to run a lot of 12 personnel. Obviously, they paid money to have two tight ends out there, and you're going to see a lot of two wide receiver sets. I believe it's Nelson Aguilar and Jacoby Myers. So that's what you want. You want one of those two that stay on the field a lot, have a lot of opportunity. Once he took the job, like just a reminder, Jacoby Myers did nothing for the first six weeks or so where wasn't on the field and was injured. But after that, from week seven on, Jacoby Myers was averaging over seven targets a game. Right, and he didn't do he did, enough he, because the, the quarterback sucks. Right, and well, the, and, he did last year. So my, my belief is that uh, if I'm going to take a shot, in fact, we just did our mock draft and I took my, I think it was my last round pick. I chose Nelson Aguilar. Um, you think you can't get it back? No, I don't think Cam can get it back. Mm -hmm. um, I okay. think that um, Mac could. Mac can get it back? Mac will throw for more yards and touchdowns than Cam did last year. That's. Mm -hmm. That's certain if he if if he were to play for a full season. Um, Cam was a valuable weapon offensively, but that came through the legs, through the rushing. I, I'm curious if, like, do you see a world where maybe Mac is the starter and then they get to the goal line and they just bring Cam oh, in? Oh, man. And then, <laughs> oh. You're, I, you're, that, uh, that's, a, that's a fun thought exercise. I don't think so. But he was so it, successful honestly, down there. That's not a bad idea. Um. Assuming that Cam Newton is like you can keep his morale up with yeah. that type of a situation. So, I, so to to finish the Jacoby Myers thought, I do think it's between Myers and Aguilar uh, for who is the the main wide receiver there. I'm going to go with the experience and the athleticism of uh, and the money of Nelson Aguilar, but the experience of the system um, and knowing uh, you know the 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 trust of uh, current quarterback Cam Newton, you could take your shot on Jacoby Myers. E the nice thing is, either one you want to take a shot on, they're your last pick. I I think he's worth the shot at the end. Instagram from Buff Alligator. 
Ooh. I, you know, if I were you don't to, mess with a buff, if one. I were to wrestle an alligator. I would definitely not want the buff one. Yeah, give me I, a skinny, scrawny alligator. Right, I prefer the toothless one. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only alligator I would ever wrestle is a toothless one, and I would also not wrestle that alligator. How many sit-down meals should one man get out of a, a rotisserie chicken? Oh, okay. So now we're not sharing this. One man. No, no. this is one man. How many meals should a uh, okay sit down? You're getting a meal. You should get at least one. You should get at least at one. At least meal. one? Yes. Okay. I think that was a given, but I believe you could glad you cleared it up. I believe you could go to two. But that's the cap. You can't get over two? No. I'm a grown man. Boy. So <laughs> you're you're sitting down. You have the full rotisserie chicken. Are you going one drum one? Chicken breast? Or yeah, I think you... you're splitting it right in half. Okay. You're, you know what I mean? If you want to make this two meals, which is probably healthier, better, wiser, um, yeah, you split it. I get it. that you're bulking, and right. you got you got to get the I'm, protein I'm down. I'm still trying to pack on the pounds uh, before I shred. Um, I'm in bulk season. So, yeah, you, you want to cut it down the middle. You don't want to go, like, both drums, and then your second meal, you don't get a drumstick. That's oh, not fun. Yeah, yeah. You want to make sure you get the same meal both times. So split it right down the middle. Uh, this one's off of the website. Katie in San Diego, would you trade the 103 in a rookie draft for Darren Waller? Oh, yeah. So you're trading. You would trade Kyle Pitts straight up for Darren Waller because that's probably who it is. Okay, so Najee and Ch uh, Jamar Chase are probably your one, Those, two. They are the most common. But at 103, you could see – you know, yeah, I guess any one of those four players of, of Najee, Jamar Chase, Travis Etienne, Kyle Pitts, you would trade potentially one of those players straight up for Darren Waller. And they and Katie adds uh her current tight end is Noah Fant. Okay, so it, it's it's certainly an interesting debate. I think that you your reaction was very surprising. Yeah, you you and Andy uh, would certainly rather have Kyle Pitts than Darren Waller. Am I correct? That is correct. So the way that I look at it, Darren Waller's 28, which uh, sounds older when you're talking about running backs or wide receivers. It's not at tight end. Tight to be end, fair, he's about to be 29. He's, uh, you know, t you look at Kelsey right now. What's Kelsey, 32 Something like that. I mean, I'll, I'll bet it. Okay. So uh, you see a lot of... Um, About to turn 32. Okay. So you see a lot of great tight ends that play longer <laughs> into their career. I like that your cop is... Well, how, how old is Travis Kelsey? The greatest fantasy tight end of all time. Well, that's my point, is that he is peaking in his 30s. It's it's not like a my my that he started peaking in his mid twenties. Sure, okay. he's still going. I'll go with Greg Olson or Delaney Walker okay. or Jared Cook or uh, the others. I'm saying tight ends can have a lot of fantasy success later in the career. I don't look at Darren Waller like he's got one year left. The way that I might look at a 28, 29 year old running back that he's got a year left. Um, but he's a known commodity. We know he's great. We know he's going to be good for fantasy. We know he's going to dominate. Do you think Kyle Pitts is bust proof? It's impossible for him to go the no. way of Eric Ebron, who was a top ten pick and was supposed no, to be great. No, that's certainly not. So anybody can bust. I guess maybe this is more team dependent, right? Like if you are a competing championship level team, and you know a fan is not going to really inspire you right now. Trading to get Darren Waller and shoring up your already great roster to go get a championship, I think is worth it. If you are in a rebuild or you're, you know, someone that's maybe hoping to make the playoffs this year, you might not. Then you, you're you're looking more build for the future, two years down the road. Okay, and let's, then Kyle Pitts is better. Let's change it. It's not Kyle Pitts. It's Jamar Chase. He fell to number three. You have Noah Fant. Are you trading? The upside of Jamar Chase again. It, no, and, I'm not. Okay, I'll say again. I don't think that Jamar Chase can't bust, but all of the all of the boxes are checked for Jamar Chase. Yeah, I wouldn't trade Jamar Chase. I wouldn't trade Najee. 
I think there's a situation where I would trade uh, Pitts, and I would definitely trade anyone after that, right? I mean, is, is there if you had the fourth pick, is it a question of whether or not you would trade? Yeah, who, I, who would be your fourth after those three? Probably Javante, Etn or Javante. But it's tough, man. This the the top of this draft class when you Javante, Travis, Etn, then you have Devonte Smith. I mean. I don't think I would do it. I don't think I would trade that, especially with Noah Fant. Noah Fant has breakout potential this year as well. From the website, Matt says, should I keep Darnell Anderson, a.k.a. <laughs> Daryl Henderson, the Rams running back? See, now it's I'm even getting mixed up now. <laughs> Which one is it? Darryl, it's should, Darnell Anderson. Should I keep Daryl Henderson and forfeit a sixth-round pick or – J.K. Dobbins for a fifth. This is a PPR league. PPR league. So keep uh, Darnell Anderson for a sixth or J.K. Dobbins for a fifth. That's that's interesting. Um, I always speak first on these. I want to hear your thoughts first. Oh, man. Excuse me. The, the PPR bump is definitely in Henderson's favor. Uh, Matthew Stafford has – is a check down guy. We we have a huge amount of historical data that Matthew Stafford likes to throw to his running back. <clears throat> and we know that that Dobbins while is a very capable pass catcher, he won't see the targets. That's that's not how the the offense runs with Lamar Jackson and that passing game in Baltimore. The round difference is completely negligible to me. It's not impacting my decision. It's just do you do you call your shot on Henderson, who the team replaced, <clears throat> or the known commodity that is Dobbins? While there's there is touchdown regression coming for Dobbins, the volume he could see, his ceiling as volume is not what Henderson's volume is or ceiling volume could be. Yeah, I, I I would agree with that. When I look at these two players, um, I, I'm more likely, like Daryl Henderson, I think, is going to be successful. Um, he's going to be a solid running back, too. And I believe that J.K. Dobbins will be a solid running back, too, as well. But if he levels up going into his sophomore year where the arrow is pointing up for Dobbins, in the sense that going into this season, they got rid of Mark Ingram, and they know that Dobbins is their guy. Uh, they drafted him. Well, obviously. Gus Edwards is still there. Sure, but but my point is... They refueled. They had a three-headed monster, and they realized they're better with just the two. And once he took over, he was, well, it was basically... Because really like, it was like a 2.25-headed mon monster last yeah, year. Yeah, I mean, it was... I mean, certainly Mark Ingram was dragging a leg behind him. He was running yes. zombie style, but um, I, I think I would go Dobbins here. Like you said, the, the round difference doesn't do it for me. I want the upside of Dobbins over Henderson. Uh, the PPR makes it closer, but I, I, I'm going to still go with the talent of J.K. Dobbins. All right, let's, uh, let's wrap it up with one more strategy question here. Mr. Party 4, what is the ideal amount of bench spots? So this is going to change based on your league size, right? Because obviously if you're in a 10-team league, um, the total pool of players will be smaller than if you're in a 14-team league. Um, but talking on a standard 12-team league, um, and, and again, part of this will be your starting roster as well. So if you've got two flex, you should probably remove one of the bench spots because I like the remove or add. I would I would remove. I like waivers to have the ability to have quality pieces in there in any kind of redraft or keeper league. I don't want it to feel like dynasty where the waivers are just so sparse because we've got two flex or three wide receiver two flex and then we've got a seven bench. Like like then the waivers are so much less important. I like waivers in redraft or keeper. So I like a five player bench. In a in a usual league, uh, which is on the smaller side, but that's what I prefer. Our league of record is a two flex league, and we have six bench spots. So uh, I think that's solid. It 
it, it allows you to hold on to some players that you believe in and, and give them some t uh, time to earn more playing time, earn more opportunities. But at the same time, it does create some scenarios in the season where you have to make a decision about uh, about putting that player back to waiver. And we are big fans of the IR spot. We have them yeah. in all the yeah, leagues yeah, yeah. we play in. It, that way, you know, if you have a smaller bench, a five-person uh, bench or something like that, um, what what can happen is that can suck when you deal with injuries because it's like oh man yeah. I got to drop someone or hold this guy who's really good and injuries suck enough already exactly for so football. it's nice when the injury is the reason you need to make a transaction that you could just take that injured guy put him in the IR spot pick someone up and not have to that way the the waivers stay fruitful um, the waiver wire does and yet you can still manage your team and not be you know we have two IR spots in almost every league we play in. Once again, we want to thank Pristine Auction. Right now, there are three different Chase Claypool jersey styles. So you got the home, you got the away, and you got an alternate. And they're all at 20 bucks right now. Those auctions end on Thursday night. Chase Claypool, one of the players who's got me hot and bothered for the 2021 season. That is going to do it. Thank you for joining us for uh, McNasty, the, the new Fantasy Reaper. <laughs> And I am Mike, the Fantasy Hitman Right. Ladies and gentlemen, we will see you Monday. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.